Good morning. It's such an honor to welcome you on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Golden Apple Foundation. My name is Nancy Northrup, and I am the chairman of the board of the Golden Apple Foundation. Um, it's a pleasure to have everyone in person. This is just remarkable, and it makes my spirit soar to have everyone here together. So welcome teachers, welcome leaders, welcome Golden Apple staff. I'm very honored to be here. Uh, a heartfelt congratulations to you all on becoming finalists for this prestigious award. Um, it wouldn't be possible, and I need to pay great honor to our founder. It wouldn't be possible without our founder, founder Mike Koldike, Mr. Koldike, who is here today. 37 years ago, it was the vision of Mike and Pat Koldike to honor teachers as if it were the Academy Awards. And you deserve that. You are our heroes. You're in the classroom teaching our children. And they are the future of our world. So thank you very much for that. You are duly honored today. This is just the beginning of your journey with Golden Apple. There are so many roles that our teachers and leaders of distinction play to achieve our mission. You will be inducted into the Golden Apple Academy of Educators. In that role, you will have the opportunity to assist in many facets of our process of selection, instruction, ment and mentoring of our Golden Apple Scholars and Accelerators. As we seek to become a material solution to the teacher shortage crisis, our vision includes you, the master teachers, teaching the next generation of educators and leaders. On behalf of the Board of Directors, we congratulate you, we support you, and we welcome you to the Golden Apple family. Thank you. I am honored to introduce 2021 Golden Apple Leadership Award recipient, Principal Martine DaCosta. Principal, um, and I quote, our Golden Apple President, Alan Mather, by the way, who was the inaugural winner of this award. Principals like Martine DaCosta are the reason behind great schools, strong teachers, and successful students. They cultivate a school community that truly flourishes under leadership. Please welcome to the stage, Principal of Winston Campus Junior High School in Palatine, Martine DaCosta. On behalf of the fellows of the Golden Apple Academy of Educators, I want to congratulate all 30 finalists for the Golden Apple Excellence in Teaching Award and the six leadership finalists. My name is Martine DaCosta, and I am the proud principal at Winston Campus Junior High and a 2021 Stanley C. Golder Excellence in Leadership Award recipient. I cannot express my gratitude enough to the Golden Apple Foundation for elevating the education profession, especially in these most hard times. The impact that the pandemic has had on education is undeniable. Yet each of you have continued to make such a significant impact on your community that people felt compelled to nominate you for this Golden Apple Award. I know that all of us here in person today, and those of you joining us from home, know the power of education. You see, I was born in Uruguay, a small country in South America, and my mom sacrificed all that she had so that my brother and I could have opportunities at a better life. Education has the power to transform lives to build our skills and our confidence as my teachers did at Plumundon, Little Village, and Whitney Young. The power of an educator is to be an inspiration for all students, especially those who need it most, to believe in those at times that maybe they don't believe in themselves. 
Going through this process last year was a humbling experience. Now, being fortunate to be part of the academy and getting a chance to be part of site visits and learning more about all the finalists and the impact that each of you have on your communities, it's been an invigorating experience. As I close out, I want to remind that all of our finalists, regardless of ultimately who is selected as the recipient of this prestigious award, are champions for students. I encourage you to connect with the folks that nominated you, that spoke on your behalf, because I personally heard some amazing things about you. As I'm sure all the other members of the Academy who were fortunate enough to go on visits did as well. Across the state, there is a lot to celebrate. Education is good hands. Congratulations and stay golden. The Golden Apple Scholars Program is the best teacher preparation program I know. It provides young men and women who are ready on day one to go into schools of need, go into classrooms of need, excite, engage, invigorate the learning of young people across the state. Well, Golden Apple does not only provide me with the scholarship, the money to go to college, but it also provides a support system. It provides workshops that you will use in real life. I was able to uh, engage in the summer institutes, and I was able to learn some stuff that my, my peers at my other institutions had, hadn't seen yet. Golden Apple's whole mission is to create the best teachers possible for Illinois students. And you know, there are not a lot of programs like this in education. And Golden Apple does that. They find people who are passionate about this and who have that vision. And that vision is something that's necessary for a classroom. All of these classes they give us are very, very beneficial and inspiring. Most teachers don't get this experience. So it's really, I don't know, grateful. Eighty-two percent of our Golden Apple Scholars stay teaching in schools of need for five or more years as compared to 54 percent of teachers nationally. So the fact that we're able to have this impact in schools of need is, is truly impressive. Golden Apple has been instrumental in my career from the very first professional development sessions to the real world classroom experiences during my first summer to my amazing mentor Molly Blobaum who helped me all throughout my first two years of teaching. I think Golden Apple scholars have a high retention rate not only because they're better prepared but because they have a network with one another because we bring scholars together to learn from one another to share with one another. Golden Apple tells you everything that's around being a great teacher. It's about the, the socio-emotional learning. It's about teaching students how to cope with pain, how to cope with all their emotions, how to just become the best person they, that they can be outside of the content. I'm very thankful for Golden Apple for providing me five years of wonderful support, whether it be personal, academically, or financially. They've always been there. I'm very thankful for that. It's a priceless experience. It's given me confidence, given me experience. Every time I come to Golden Apple, I feel like I'm gonna get the best of the best. We need Golden Apple Scholars in schools of need because these are the places where great teachers are needed the most. I appreciate everything that Golden Apple has ever done for me. They really helped me along this path. Please welcome to the stage, Alan Mather. Hello, everyone. My name is Alan Mather. I'm the president of the Golden Apple Foundation with Alicia Winkler. She and I lead the foundation. Um, so, on behalf of us, on behalf of Akisa Thurman Stovall, our chief program officer. I'm Nellie Quintana, who many of you have communicated quite a bit with, as well as all the members of the Academy, we want to congratulate you on having your work recognized today. So congratulations to you. 
Before we get going, though, we want to call a little audible. Um, you heard that our founder, Mike Koldike, is here, and we'd like Mike to say a few words to you today before we go on with the program. So, Mike. Thank you, Alan. Nancy Northrup, our wonderful chair, Alicia uh, Winkler, and Alan Mather, you have just met, and Pam Whitmer, right? Where is Pam? Okay. Look, we need, we need 100,000 of you, maybe a million. Uh, and the sooner we get there, the better. Uh, I won't last that long, but uh, some of you will. Let's face it. Um, our nation has some problems. But our nation can cure those problems if we have teachers and school leaders like you. So persevere. Hold each other's hand, talk to each other, and say, we must go on. We must, we must be in California. We must be in Arizona. We must be in Alabama. We must be there in strength. And we must be there with much, much larger um, numbers. Imagine if this nation had your progeny, your teachers, your school leaders from coast to coast. Our problems would shrink in magnitude, and you wouldn't recognize this country uh, as it is, but you'd say, wow, look what's happened here. Look what's happened here in this United States of America. So God bless each and every one of you, and just remember, go out there and find another 100,000 just like yourselves. <laughs> Pat them on the back, hold their hand, preach to them, and tell them what can happen in this nation if we have scores and scores of women and men just like you. God bless you, thank you for being here, and remember, you must grow. <laughs> thank you. Mike is a tough act to follow. <laughs> um, it is really his and his late wife, Pat's vision that made this possible today. So you are here because of their passion and energy. So. <clears throat> so I want to thank you again for being here. <laughs> we have a small group here together in person but we also have those who are attending via live stream. And I am hopeful that one day soon we will be able to come together and fill these halls to truly honor and support those of you who are doing this incredible work every day. And normally we would have members of the selection committee here, those who have reviewed and scored your applications, who did the work to visit your schools, observed your classes and leadership, and talked to your advocates about the work you do every day to enrich and enhance students' lives. While we kept the group small today um, due to the ongoing pandemic, members of the selection committee are on live stream too, and we need to recognize them for their incredible contributions to you and to our profession right now. So to the selection committee. Finalists, you are being honored at a time when our profession is under siege from all sides. On one side, the pandemic has made schooling much more difficult. Whether you have spent a great deal of your time wholly in person or whether you've been hybrid, you have all experienced the strain of dealing with the pandemic. Each of you has dealt with students and colleagues who have been out Students who have struggled with their wellness, especially where education has been, at best, inconsistent. And you have had to figure out how to best serve all students in this environment. On the other side, 
We have seen that schools have been a battleground around issues that are about something other than schooling. We have seen school boards erupt in arguments that have nothing to do with the work that happens day to day in your classrooms. Teachers should be, should not be, and cannot be political football. It's about educating and supporting students, period. <laughs> How we provide the curriculum, the instructional best practices, the necessary and individual supports that will help students grow and thrive with equity must always be at the forefront and in the hands of you, our experts. Speaking of experts, there's a saying that education is the one profession where everyone is an expert because everyone went to school. So everyone knows how to do this job, right? I mean, I'm sure people tell you how to do the job all the time. But once you graduated, kind of you knew everything there was to know, right? No growth since then. It's like, yep, I'm fully realized. Somehow I, I don't think that's quite right. You worked hard. You studied brain development. You adapted lessons. You recognized where students are in their development. You met students where they were and helped them to develop, to become lifelong learners, to reach their full potential. And we are recognizing the work you do now when there is a severe and growing teacher shortage across this state and across the nation. And while this shortage grows, I want to articulate the qualities that you demonstrate. You continue to grow your expertise around instructional best practices and culturally sustaining pedagogy. For the teachers, you create classroom environments that engage students at the highest levels, provide agency to students to make decisions, and provide structure and space for true learning. For the leaders, you are true instructional leaders, understanding the value of formative assessment, of being a partner in lesson design and implementation. Next. You understand the importance of cultural relevance to advancing student learning. Teachers, you know that students' backgrounds are strengths to be built upon and not deficiencies to be remediated. You provide both windows to a broader world as well as mirrors that reflect students' backgrounds, cultures, and unique characteristics. Leaders, by affirming the instructional choices that teachers make through resource allocation and support, by challenging them to highlight the strengths and choices they make in the classroom, and by supporting your teachers that take risks in the best interests of students, you create the conditions for success. Third, you have a growth mindset. For both teachers and leaders, you know that those you serve are capable of growth and change. Those with fixed mindsets talk about students or teachers this way, oh, this person is X and this person is Y. But part of what makes you special is that you see everyone's potential. And that means more work for you. However, when you have that growth mindset, you know it is their, your responsibility to help each person in a way that will help each of them develop. That takes serious effort. Of course, you also have the same view of yourselves. Reading your applications and those school visit reports demonstrate what you continue to do is that you continue to grow and develop as professionals. It's inspiring and life-affirming. Fourth, you know that schools are the hub of the community. Whether your school is selective or community focused, whether your students walk across the street or take a bus for an hour, you work, the work you and your students do change and enriches the communities you serve. The more we can do to apply what happens in schools to the community, 
the more we see relevance, students see relevance to their education, and the more the community will support the work that you do every day. And finally, you're professionals. <laughs> you hold yourselves to high standards. You model for others in the profession. You are leaders. And it is for these reasons that we honor you. But there's another reason to recognize the amazing work you do. So my high school uh, English teacher was Ken Mann. And he inspired me to be a high school English teacher. When I moved to a new town, he uh, took this gawky introvert and um, made me feel connected to my classes, to the peers around me, and inspired my love of writing and literature. While it may not be true of everyone here, I'd love to see a show of hands of those who went into teaching because someone inspired you. Wow, that's a lot of hands. I'm not the only one, that's good. Well, there's a reason that that's so important. And it's a reason that we have to recognize your work. We need you to be the people who inspire others to go into teaching. We need you, as you heard from Nancy, to prepare those who are choosing teaching and aspire to do what you do. We need you to support those who are in the early years of teaching when, as we all remember, it is so difficult. Because you know, once you're recognized, it's not just about the accolades you receive, we ask you to do work, too. <laughs> you just watched the video on the Golden Apple Scholars right before lunch. And once I, once I conclude, you'll see a video about the Golden Apple Accelerators. And it is the members of the Academy, those we recognize, those award-winning teachers that you heard about from Martine and leaders who inspire, develop, and support our next generation of teachers. Neil Grimes over there, our Director of Scholar Institute and Curriculum, will be reaching out to many of you in the upcoming years about bringing your knowledge and expertise to Illinois' most impressive future teachers. Rosie Patel, where are you, Rosie? Rosie Patel, our Director of Mentoring and Teacher Development, and a Golden Apple Award recipient. Um, 2014. Um, she'll be reaching out at the same time to encourage you to become mentors to support those teachers in their early years of teaching. And you know, one other way you can support, we talked about at my table, Caroline, where are you? Caroline's back in the back. It's not too late to sign up for the Golden Apple Marathon team. <laughs> so if you're a runner, Chicago Marathon's not until October, go see Caroline there. She'd love you to do a little running and fundraising for the Golden Apple Foundation. So we need you. Your energy, your commitment, your expertise is what our teaching profession needs right now. We hope that with all the work you have to do, you will find the work you will do with future teachers to be invigorating, whether with scholars or accelerators. It is energizing and life-affirming. You are what our profession needs. Our state needs you, our nation needs you, our children need you. Thank you. So now, I'd like to uh, show that video of the accelerators. A new program's providing a path for college students to the classroom. Golden Apple has launched an accelerated participant program. The one-year teacher residency and licensure program will expedite preparation for schooling for teachers. talk about its Accelerator Teacher Residency and Licensure Program as President Alan Mather. So the Golden Apple Accelerators launched this last year just in pilot phase with 30 career changers or seniors in college who did not go through schools of education as a way to address the dire teacher shortage in Illinois. The Golden Apple Accelerators again takes career changers, 
They go through a residency where they're placed in a school in their communities. Um, they receive a teaching license through one of our higher education partners. And at the end of that one year, they're teachers in the classroom. They're making differences in the lives of students. Knowing that you have support, you've got your peers you're working with, you've got all these experienced teachers in Golden Apple that are pulling for you. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. It makes a huge, huge difference. And you know, right now is the time for people to rethink what they're doing. If people are looking for meaning in their lives, if they really want an opportunity to affect change, teaching is the way to do that. Right out of college, um, started a family and um, put off my career for quite some time. Um, as I grew, what I wanted to do in life changed and um, I started working as a paraprofessional at Decatur Public Schools and loved education. I fell in love with education and started to search for a program that would fit my needs and my family. And I found Golden Apple and it was the best decision that I ever made. The Golden Apple Accelerator started this first year just for special education in high school, but we're expanding it now from pre-K through high school, special education, bilingual education, whatever the field, we are looking for those who want to make a difference. I've got to say that that last video, I just want you to know I was out on a run and someone said, the media wants to talk to you. So that was... <laughs> um, looks like everybody's lined up. So let me bring one more person up to the stage, the amazing Nelly Quintana, our Assistant Director of Awards. Nelly, come on down. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It is now time to honor our 2022 Golden Apple Awards for Excellence in Teaching finalists. Please step up, Anne Michelle Boyle from Whitney Young Magnet High School. Nicholas Kennedy from Mount Zion High School. Kristen Chapman from John Hancock College Prep High School. Otto Corzo from McHenry Community High School. <laughs> Philip Kilcasey from Wheaton Warrenville South High School. Laura Dubizek 
from Neequa Valley High School. Robert Davis from George Westinghouse College Prep High School. <laughs> Tina Dunker from United Township High School. William Azak from Wendelin Brooks College Prep Academy. <laughs> Amelia Garcia from Nazareth Academy. Alan Hanagar from Northside College Prep High School. Amy Jasinowski from Nicholas Sen High School. Andrew Jones from Air Force Academy High School. Brittany Kenyon from Deerfield High School. <laughs> Laurel Kulik from CICS Northtown Academy High School. Anna Lane from Thomas Kelly College Prep. <laughs> Carrie Largo from Hoffman Estates High School. Nikki Lazaretto from Deerfield High School. Andrew Lister from Orion High School. Mary Lopez from Schomburg High School. <laughs> Ronette Lesby Brown from Rich Township High School Fine Arts and Communication Campus.
Michelle Marconi from Rolling Meadows High School. Alyssa Miller from Egyptian Community Unit School. <laughs> Annette Oshesky from John F. Kennedy High School. Miguel Parra Garcia from Rolling Meadows High School. Sharon Ponder Ballard from Inglewood STEM High School. Pooja Ramaswamy from Lakeview High School. <laughs> Holly Scow from United Township High School. Lisa Thayer from Amos Alonzo Stagg High School. <laughs> Jennifer Trejo from William Howard Taft High School. Congratulations once again to the 2022 Golden Apple Award <laughs> finalist for Excellence in Teaching Award. I would now like to welcome back to the podium Golden Apple's board chair, Nancy Northrup, to introduce the Golden Apple Excellence in Leadership Award presented in honor of founding Golden Apple board member, Stanley C. Golder. Thank you, thank you again. Um, congratulations to all the teachers, so exciting. Next year we're gonna hand out pom-poms to everybody, it'll be fun. <laughs> the Golden Apple Award for Excellence in Leadership honors exemplary performance in school leadership by a principal or head of school who has had a significant positive impact on the school, created a culture of inclusivity, and delivered dramatic student growth. Named for my father, Stanley Golder, a friend of our Golden Apple founder, Mike Koldike, and a founding board member of Golden Apple, this award embodies my dad's spirit of excellence in leadership. His belief that education is the key to a more tolerant, inclusive world drove him to lead in every aspect of his life. The principles we are recognizing today have reached that level of excellence. They have led their communities during the most challenging of times, ensuring that teachers, students, and families all knew their value. We congratulate you all and are proud to welcome you to the Golden Apple family. On behalf of my mom, who is still with us at age 90, 
Um, she w wishes you um, a welcome to the Golder family as well. Her words always are, our family continues to grow. <laughs> so congratulations to you all, and thank you. It is now time to honor our 2022 Golden Apple Awards for Excellence in Leadership finalist, Jack Balderman from Westman High School. <laughs> Matt Condon from Parkview School. Cordell Ingram from MacArthur High School. Michael Coran from Chicago Math and Science Academy. Yalil Nieves from Mary Gage Peterson Elementary. <laughs> Brittany Green from Why Better Young School of Excellence who is joining us virtually this morning. Congratulations to our 2022 Golden Apple Awards for Excellence in Leadership finalist. I would now like to welcome back Ellen Mather, Golden Apple's president. Now it's time for the long speech. No. I, um, I want to thank all of our guests for joining us today from across the state, as well as our out-of-state attendees. Thank you so much for taking the time to celebrate with us this morning. But I have one request before we dismiss everyone. Could I get all the finalists to come up on stage for a group photo? Until then, thank you all for coming. <laughs> Everybody, all finalists, all finalists up on the stage. <laughs>